really I, I, is at the heart of this is to get uh, students ourselves into a position where we're looking at high quality results from other people. So the uh, best place to find those is usually in museums. And um, uh, so really, in a very, just a very simple sense, the idea of taking students into a, um, a museum print room or an archive and working from original material. And um, uh, this comes out of a research project I did about three, four years ago at the Tate using students from this university and staff where I got them drawing from Turner's drawings and it ended up just doing a show at the Tate. And if anybody's interested in finding out about it, there's a very, it's a very good branch of the Tate's website and it's called Drawing from Turner. And if you hit that, there are all sorts of great essays and examples and people talking about the point of drawing from other people's drawings. Now, um, I, um, as a professor of drawing, obviously have to think about teaching drawing quite a lot. And one of the things I've discovered is it's pretty futile doing PowerPoint presentations about drawing because often very good drawings don't photograph well. And that really what one wants to be able to do is to look closely at the drawing. Now, this is a proper drawing. Um, it's done by an artist called Jean Elion. Uh, he lived in Paris about the same time as Leger and was a modernist. Um, he, um, and this is a drawing he did on the 5th of July, 1950. Um, man reading a newspaper. It's one of many drawings he did of that subject matter. And um, there's many ways you can come at this drawing. One of them is you just look at it and you say, the feet are wrong, or the newspaper is strange. Somebody said to me the newspaper looked like a drawing by Frank Geary, the architect. And there is quite an interesting shift in language within that drawing between the language that you used to describe the person and the language you used to describe the newspaper. They're, and it, you know, it tells you something about 1950. Taste was in flux. People were moving between the 1920s and 30s and expressionism through into a new kind of modernism and um, more, more uh, pure and less embellished handwork going on. So very, very interesting drawing that. Um, but the trouble with this kind of class, you have to own these things to be able to do this kind of class. And today, most uh, art schools don't have very good teaching collections. You know? But you know, the reason we had teaching collections was that people thought at one time it was really worth having really good things to look at and not having to be at the mercy of the museum. Now, I just wanted to show you a few drawings that I did from this. Um, and I'm just looking at the date. I did them in um, 2007, so a while ago now. And what I did over a month was draw that drawing every day. And it was just an experiment. It was, it was part of me being a professor and I wanted to find out what would happen. Now, I'm not going to bore you with seeing all the resolutions, but just to kind of get you on the track. But what I became interested in, and see if I can hear, let's, let's put a good on this. Pause on it. What I became interested in was exactly what I was just talking to you about. The difference between these kind of marks those kind of marks. And what I began to sort of see in it was not so much the narrative of a man reading a newspaper, but actually the narrative of how Elion's drawing was changing through the one image. Now, this of course in science is called analysis, you know, and um, what I did actually was a visual analysis of this, and um, in the end, um, I ended up publishing it as an article in a journal. And, um, you know, that's the way it took me. Now, the other way I went was that I actually began to research what went on on the 5th of July, uh, 1950. And, you know, there's only a couple of major newspapers in Paris. There's Le Mans and Le Figaro, and then there's Paris Soir. And I got the three newspapers, and I went through on that day and what was, it, what was in the paper. So you begin to think about, well, you know, this is a man reading. You know, this isn't a bit of crummy old formalism. This is about a life. And do you know what's going on then? Well, you know, the Russians had got a nuclear deterrent. Vietnam was warming up. Um, the French uh, were uh, really stirring up, quite, and Americans were stirring up quite a lot of trouble in Vietnam, but the war hasn't started. Um, uh, Israel was... It, it, going into flux for the first time. It was an amazingly disruptive period. And so 
you know, and this is, most people didn't have a television, so newspapers got completely different significance, and this was the news, you know, and when you see a man sitting like that, you know, he may have been on the subway, when he wasn't, he was posed up in anyone's studio. So, what I want to say to you is that when you look at a drawing, you see a lot of different things. Now, we're going to now go over the road and go into the print room where they have got 37,000 drawings by turn. Okay, so um, grab a seat. And um, I think probably the um, key to this is that um, we've got about 45 minutes. And at the end of it, just right at the bottom of the page, how long do you think it took to do this drawing? And um, in just two sentences, describe how it was drawn. How you think turned it, what its strategy was. Okay, so two sentences describing the strategy and a time of how long you think it took to draw. And, um, but don't write any of that until the very end. But that's what you should hold in your head whilst drawing, that you're going to answer those questions through drawing. What you've been doing uh, this last 45 minutes is actually reading that drawing and making notes with a pencil as you went, which of course is substantially different from copying something. Yeah. Sure. Yeah.